Um, the, the, the cliche tale of two halves, but we were not quick enough first half, um, we weren't progressive enough first half, we were a bit slow in our build up, we didn't get beyond their lines enough, um, <clears throat> when we did we were dangerous, um, so the reality was we at half time had a few words with each other and, and recognised that we needed to be better um, and that we did not give the Red Devil energy that we needed to do. So second half you saw that and the players took ownership which is what we'll ever, all we'll ever want they perform. We're there to support that process and and we were much better second half. And uh, just a word about Lucia Garcia, she got two goals today. Um, the first one I think was exceptional. Just uh, sum up what it's like to work with her and how, how she's developing as you might have said. Do you know what, more importantly, like we had a meeting this week me and Lucia, literally on <clears throat> Wednesday, I think it was, and I reviewed her game against uh, Lewis. I don't think she performed anywhere near her ability, but her energy to want to get back on the ball. And so we had a good, honest conversation, and and she was great. And the reason we signed Lufia is because I think she can do that for ninety minutes. And she just took, a, she's taken a little bit of time to adapt and leave. But she is absolutely. When I talk about the Red Devil energy, it's, it's her. Like she is it. The way she moves, the way she presses, the way she. The, I mean, the touch and goal is, is beautiful. Uh, but it's the way she invades the space behind the shoulder. That that's exactly how I see it. So, she was uh, excellent, and she needs to keep it up now. I've got now 45 minutes or, or second half of footage to show her that like, this is the new big guy here that Manchester United need. And finally for me, uh, the fans today, over almost 28,000 inside Old Trafford. Can you sum up that occasion? Do you know what, more importantly, I, I said this, this is the third game I've played here um, as manager and it felt more like home today and it felt like a, like it's our ground as well to, to kind of perform at. Uh, and I know the players felt that as well, but with the second half, there was a moment in turn the fans just got right behind us and it was then then we knew the, the energy and sometimes when you've not had massive crowds for a long you know had, not as long as women's football has been around we're, we're pretty good we have lots and lots of people but it does make a massive difference and i felt the, the fans were magnificent throughout and especially second half when we needed them thank you, thank you. Hi, Mark. congratulations on the, on, the, on the great win great second half i want to talk about ona for for a moment i think she was phenomenal now she's second in the WSL for assists, she's got eight assists now. How important is she, not just this, this season, but to keep her as well in summer? Yeah, it is, it is, it's, and we're working hard to try and do that. Um, she's a magnificent fullback. I have a, there's a lot of love for Honor um, at the team, she knows that, um, and and we have, you know, we've got to start Manchester United for a long time to come. You know, she's the type of player that will help us reach our potential, um, and, but, but first half, we need to expect more from her. And that's, that's the beauty of her, right? She comes in the second half and does that, and yet you just have to remind her of, of what she needs to do. But she has that ability and that quality. So, yes, we want to, we're working hard behind the scenes to try and keep her, um, but you know, because she performs like that. And just one more question on Alicia Russo. She came off to a, a great applause from, from the crowd today. I don't know if not get a goal, but I guess she got the assist of getting the penalty. How important is it to keep her as well in, in the pursuit for Champions League football? Yeah, it is. I mean, look, Alessia is a, a Manchester United player to the minimum at the end of the season, right? And we're working hard behind the scenes to do that as well. But again, Alessia, we, we, I spoke to her at half time, she didn't get up to her speed. She was a little bit subdued first half, as, as a lot of players were. But in second half, we saw Alessia get up to her speed. And then she has the, this unique ability to pivot on literally a penny. Um, the way that she can turn somebody, hold off. off pressure and then cut quickly yeah she, she's great and and but I need to see that more from her so you know we're, we're trying work as I say we're working hard to try and keep her here but um, I, while I while I have and while she's my player and we're making sure she's at right on the top of the game and second half she was and that's, that's exactly what I expect from her going forward thank you Mark. thank you um, you talked about um, not playing to your best in the first half why do you think that was I just, do you know what? I don't think it was a negative. I don't think we were. I don't think we were bad. I think we were trying to figure out West Ham's high press, and we didn't go beyond it enough. Um, they were very high halfway, um, sitting off in the first phase, but then 
jumping as we went to the side. So we just needed to to get between the lines a little bit quicker. Um, but really, then use the fullbacks beyond the, the wide player so that we could progress, and, and then they would naturally fold their shape. Um, and we didn't do that enough first half. We didn't, and so we looked at some little adaptations as well as energy ad adaptations at half time, and, and second half we were much better. So obviously, winning to keep pace with Chelsea moves ahead of again. Um, is it was today a case of winning ugly? I mean, you've won four now, but obviously with a performance that wasn't perfect, that was it a case of getting the win and just put the pressure back on Chelsea? I mean, it is, of course, that's the result part of the game, but. No, I mean, we will look at, we have perfect for us is that we saw uh, less energy in the first half and then loads more in the second half. So we've got stuff we can learn from that ourselves. Look, it's, it's great to be top of it, but we don't win anything right now. So <clears throat> we are, we know what we've got to do. And I think although we haven't performed well for the whole game, we've performed better and we know why we did second half and that's what we'll take forward into the game to come along. And just one more thing is um, just checking that both Alessia Russo and Mary are so okay because obviously they're carried on but it's now getting so close to the World Cup that whenever an England player goes down it's uh, there's a little bit of a flux there just in case so. but uh, just checking they're both okay. Yeah Mary was a uh, contact she was smiling after the game so I think you'll be sore but um, and then Alessia was a calf I think again contact so both seemed fine afterwards both were smiling so um, no over concern right now. That's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I did, I have a promise to you. You did? Sorry, you did. <laughs> um, I'm going to break my promises, you know that now. Good luck. Um, <laughs> uh, forgot my question. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, uh, Hayley Ladd, we spoke about Hayley yeah. Ladd as well during the week, um, alongside haircuts. And, um, <laughs> you definitely forgot what you were going to say. Yeah, I um, Really nice moment for her to get goal today. It's maybe not what she's known for, but a great finish. Um, she's like a 7 out of 10 player every single week, sometimes more. How important is she just, you know, in the first half? Sticky, but how important is it how someone like that can just protect the possession and just be so strong in um, winning the ball back and then sort of getting into more progressive areas? Everyone, I mean, you know, a lot of people throw criticism at me for um, for lack of rotation, right? <clears throat> but with the game schedule the way it is and, and, and no midweek games, you know, as a coach, you go for consistency and, and she's missed consistent. So, uh, Hayley has loads more to add to her game. I've known Hayley a long time now. She's played for me in two different clubs. Um, and she can be still better between the lines because when she really is on a game, you see it like it. She can boss a whole game. Um, but she was she was excellent um, throughout. And barring progressive moments, which you know I wanted to do more because I'm always going to ask more of her, she, she was excellent. But I want to add a special mention to Toomey today. Who I thought was magnificent. Like it's it's about time she she was aggressive off the ball. She was aggressive on the ball again. We've spoken this week about what she needs to do. I thought she was excellent. I thought Katie Zellen was asked Katie Zellen to be the metronome today, and she kept us ticking, ticking, ticking. I thought so as a three, I thought they were great. I wanted to talk about Katie Zellen as well. I think that's three and four games she's now scored all Trafford. Another player that maybe you wouldn't expect to be scoring or, or, or frequent, but she seems like a big game player. She's obviously in the England squad on a regular basis now. Um, what, is it, what is it about her where she just keeps showing up on the, on the big stages? Big game brain, Graham. She's got a big game brain. This, this girl sees the game two steps ahead. I've said it a lot. She is, um, for what her legs won't allow her to carry, her brain carries her way beyond. Um, she is, as I say, she sees stages, she sees pictures, and sometimes, when people don't move to the thing she's seen, that maybe stumbles her. Um, but that's the why she's the captain. She sees the game, she produces the game plan with us um, in the way that she plays, and, and she gels, helps gel our team. So, um, you know, I thought she was excellent. I asked her in the week as well to, to, to be more consistent. I felt she'd given away a few balls that she's overthinking, just keep the rhythm of the game. And I thought she was great at doing that today. How old do you think she is? How what? How underrated do you think she is? Because she doesn't always get the credit. I mean, she's not underrated by me, so she plays a lot. So, um, yeah, she's. Um, I, I think she gets unnecessary attention at times, or not enough. Um, but the reality is that that's okay. She she gets it. She understands it. She's got a real real good head on her shoulders. Comes from a great family background. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm. She's absolutely. I'm absolutely proud to have her as our well, captain. Cheers, Mark. Thanks. Thank you, mate.
This is one from me, Mark. Um, will you be watching the game tomorrow? And if so, how nervous or not nervous? Not nervous. What are you hoping for? No, not nervous. Uh, I mean, obviously, you'd like a result in, in it, and some of these dropping points, right? So that, that's those games. We've got two of those nature games coming up um, against those teams. So the reality is, I haven't seen my daughter today, so um, I will have a we'll have some time together tomorrow and and just enjoy family time um, because I think that's that's the most important. We we preach about that as a as a collective, as a team, they enjoy the downtime. Um, and there's nothing we can control tomorrow, so why why worry about it? Yeah. Um, <coughs> you kind of freed it on white field question. <laughs> You're stewing on it, aren't you? Um, um, you kind of touched on it before, but you know what you need to do. You've got six league games left. Mm -hmm. Um, and you're obviously a stickler for one game at a time. How mm -hmm. much is that mentality that really can come down to, like, say, six cup finals to achieve what you want? Yeah, cup finals, but again, I mean, the reality is they are not cup finals. We just need to perform, Jay. Like, we've got, we have a great opportunity. I think when we put them as cup finals, we, we feel sometimes that that makes us play better. Actually, that makes us reach far outside of the things we would naturally control. So. No, we're going to play six games, six league games, and we're going to focus on trying to win all of those as, as best we can. We know how difficult that's going to be. We don't expect anything. So when you don't live with expectation, you just play football, and we will just play football. And I will not change. Nobody, no matter how many people go with me and come and say, I will be focused for every game like we are, the one that's just gone and the one that's coming up. We will stay focused and because the regardless, I don't, we don't deserve a result if we don't fall. I know you can win ugly, and that's a great thing as a, as a winning team, I know that. But we've got to strive for performance, and that's something, first half we didn't do, second half we did do. And uh, just a little bit lighter, I assume that you didn't celebrate your birthday the other day properly for preparing for this one, and is that going to come up tomorrow, family time? Uh, actually, no, to be fair, Laura, um, she treated me, I'm a, I'm a Harry Potter fan in terms of... Um, the, the nature of the film and, and, and so on, and so we went to watch the stage show probably three or four weeks ago, um, which I thought was excellent. So um, she's already treated me. She's um, I can't have a two-week birthday as she's already told me. So no, I just a little bit of family time. Look, I is at a party tomorrow, so um, and then we get to spend the rest of the day together. So yeah, it's uh, it'll be just family time's great for me. I, I really enjoy it. I'm sure you do too. Yeah. Alright. Cheers. Thank, Thank you, mate. Come on then. What's in there? What's in there? That's not coffee, is it? It's hot chocolate. Um, <laughs> we make a lot of uh, stay at the table and going for the title and winning games, football. But for you, what does success look like this season, or what would failure be? So, so that's such a deep question. I wish that in the last year, of course, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, look, success for me is trying to maximise performance because I know, and I, I don't say that as a throwaway comment, performance is control. Control of games, control of what the opponent do, control of what you do to the opponent. And so that, that's the reason we talk about performance because, and you can see I'm up and down, like I'm usually pretty calm on the sideline, I let Martin um, kind of direct the parts and stuff. So, but today was much more about, I didn't think, feel our energy was there, I didn't feel the rhythm of our game was there. So um, success for me looks like, of course, f for us as a club, it's winning things. That's success. So, so I'll put that aside there, I'll put that, because that's a place we, we want to win things. But we want to we wanna do things that are bigger than that. We want to play football, we want to be aggressive with the ball, without the ball. We want to be the energy team, the people who love to come and watch, and I want to be, I almost want to be the team that, you love your team, but then you kind of watch Manchester United because they are exciting, they're energetic, and they epitomise. So that, for me, would be the other part of the success. Um, but of course, winning games is, is what I'm here for. Um, and then failure, if we don't fall, if we don't keep getting better, and, and the reality is we're getting better, and we're getting more experience, and we're getting uh, more energy, and so, so we, are, we, are, we are succeeding in that sense. So failure for me would be if we take our eyes off that and all of a sudden start looking like we've got how many cup finals left. We're going to stay focused on enjoying football and playing to our, our level of energy. So you see your job as a manager 
as maximising performance, helping the player develop rather than Correct. getting the win at any weight you can. No, no, we would, we would do that. We've done that this year. So no, I don't, I don't see it that way. I see it as look, there are stages of the game where you've got to try and change the game to win it. Um, so no, I, absolutely not. I won't. I won't. I used to at Birmingham try and play the same way and we're going to be the, but actually no, you know, as I've grown up and as I've matured, we have to try and win the game, so we have to find ways to win the game, but up until that point we have to maximise the opportunity to win that game the way we can, because we have, look how many different goal scorers we have, because once a team shuts us down one side, we now we use the opposite space or we use a different way of scoring, so, so we designed it that way, so... Um, no, I, I, just to clarify, success would be, now it's a good question, I'm, I'm happy you asked it. No, we have to find ways to win games, because that's what we're here for. But I want to, until that point, try and maximise options, because I think that can help us win more games. Is that, Thank you. Is that right? Yeah, that's good. Thanks. Anyone else? I've got one more. Yeah. Good. Because um, <laughs> you've got what you're going to ask, right? You know what, that's the God's honest truth, yeah. <laughs> I remembered. Um, I know it's not really in your control, and it's not got nothing to do with today's game, but obviously semi-final coming up soon, you yeah. talked about today feeling like Cold Traffic feels more like home, and I think it definitely feels like that. Is there a possibility that you could potentially play the semi-final Cold Traffic, or would you prefer that to be at LSV? Um, honestly, whichever way our fans feel uh, uh, and are as energetic as any any place they are, so whatever way we feel their energy, so um, I don't know what the conversations are around that, but if it's at, it's at Old Trafford, brilliant, if it's at Old uh, LSV, brilliant. Like our fans will feel it, so um, you know we are uh, we have the best fans in the world, um, expectant fans, of course. Um, but yeah, they're they're the best fans in the world. So uh, wherever we are, I'm sure they'll pack it out. Cheers, Mark. Thank you, mate.